Welcome Grade 10s! Today we will look at different ways to calculate the quantity known as the mole. To do these calculations we need to look at the relationship between the number of moles, mass and molar mass. Many people get confused between molecular mass and molar mass, so before we continue let's revise what they are. Molecular mass is the mass of one molecule. Molar mass is the mass of one mole of molecules. We previously learned that the mole is a measure of the amount of a substance, just like one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. One mole is equal to 6,02 times 10 to the power 23 molecules. Did you notice that the unit for the number of moles is written without the E? The molar mass of an atom and the relative atomic mass have the same number but different units. Let's use sulfur as an example. We see that the relative atomic mass of sulfur is 32. This means that the molar mass of sulfur is 32 grams per mole. In other words, one mole of sulfur atoms has a mass of 32 grams. What do you think the mass of two moles of sulfur atoms will be? The number of moles has doubled, so the mass will also double. Two moles of sulfur atoms have a mass of 64 grams. We see that the mass is equal to the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass. We can write this as a formula. In the formula, molar mass is represented with a capital M. Mass is a small letter M, and the number of moles is represented by a small letter N. We know that the mass is equal to the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass. The formula is M equals N times M. The equation can be rearranged so that the number of moles is the subject of the formula. The number of moles equals to the mass divided by the molar mass. Molar mass is measured in grams per mole. Mass is measured in grams and number of moles is measured in the unit mole. The mass must always be in grams. If the mass measurement is in another unit, we must change it to grams before we do any calculations. Let's try a calculation together. Here is a container filled with 532 grams of chlorine gas. How many moles of chlorine gas is in the container? First, we need to find out more about the chlorine gas. Chlorine is one of the seven diatomic gases, so its formula is Cl2. Chlorine has a molar mass of 35,5 gram per mole. Therefore, chlorine gas will have a mass of double the molar mass of a single atom. Chlorine gas has a molar mass of 71 gram per mole. Using the formula that we derived earlier, we can now calculate the number of moles. We will have to write down the formula and substitute the information we have. The mass, M is 532, and the molar mass is 71. This is equal to 7,49 mole. Let's join Keke as she works through another example. If we had to work out the molar mass for sodium hydroxide, we start by writing its formula. Then we add the relative atomic mass of each of the elements in the compound which can be found on the periodic table. For sodium, the atomic mass is 23. For oxygen, it's 16. And for hydrogen, it is 1. The sum of these is 40. But we need to show the correct unit in the answer. Molar mass has the unit of grams per mole, written as g dot mole to the minus 1. So the correct answer is 40 grams per mole. Now, can you use the molar mass to calculate the number of moles in this 4 gram sample of sodium hydroxide? Remember that the number of moles equals the mass of the sample divided by the mass of one mole. Compare your answer to mine.
The number of moles equals the mass of the sample. 4 grams divided by the molar mass of sodium hydroxide, 40 grams per mole. So the number of moles is 0, 0,1 mole. Thank you, Keke. Now it is time to look at the relationship between the number of moles and the number of particles. We already know that the amount of particles in one mole of carbon-12 is that big number called Avogadro's number. It equals 6,02 times 10 to the power of 23. This means that there will be 6,02 times 10 to the power of 23 carbon atom in one mole of carbon. We can express this in an equation. The number of particles will be equal to the number of moles multiplied by 6,02 times 10 to the power of 23. We can rewrite the equation in symbols where capital N represents the number of particles. The number of moles is represented by a small n and Avogadro's number is represented by a capital N subscript A. This formula can now be used to determine the number of particles in any compound. Let's do an example together. Determine the number of molecules in 4 moles of a sulfuric acid. This problem is a lot easier if we imagine each mole as a separate box. Imagine one mole as a box with 6,02 times 10 to the power of 23 particles. So 4 moles of anything will be 4 of these boxes. So let's calculate how many particles that is. Write down the formula and substitute the values that we know. The calculator gives an answer of 2,408 times 10 to the power 24. This is rounded to two decimal places giving 2,41 times 10 to the power of 24 molecules of sulfuric acid. That wasn't so bad. Let's take this calculation a step further. Determine the number of oxygen atoms in 4 moles of sulfuric acid. Let's start this calculation by looking more closely at the structure of a molecule of sulfuric acid. In one molecule of sulfuric acid, there are 4 oxygen atoms. This ball represents the sulfur. These 2 balls represent hydrogen. These 4 balls represent the oxygen. As we can see, there are four oxygen atoms in one molecule of sulfuric acid. We already know that there are 2,41 times 10 to the power of 24 molecules of sulfuric acid in four moles. Now, all we need to do is multiply the number of molecules of sulfuric acid by the number of oxygen atoms in each molecule. 2,41 times by 10 to the power of 24 times by 4 gives us 9,64 times 10 to the 24 atoms of oxygen in 4 mole of sulfuric acid. Let's do one more example. Why don't you try this one on your own? How many moles are present in a container containing 3,01 times 25 water molecules with the formula H2O? First, we need to manipulate the formula so that the number of moles is the subject of the formula. The number of moles equals the number of particles divided by Avogadro's number. Now we substitute the known values into the equation and by using a calculator we get an answer of 50 moles of water. Now we are able to calculate the number of moles of a chemical compound from either its mass or the number of particles. In our next lesson we will look at the empirical formula of compounds and percentage composition. Until then, goodbye.